I mean, it's just an amazing thing when you see how powerful the mind is. Those people that got the saline injections for Parkinson's disease, that had intention tremors or pill rolling or uh, problems walking, fascination gait or steppage gait, they had problems involuntarily controlling their body. Mm -hmm. When they got the saline injection and told it was a very powerful uh, new drug for Parkinson's, their dopamine levels rose about 200%. Their brain started right. making dopamine. It wasn't, they couldn't make their dopamine by themselves. In other words, right. if I said to you, double your dopamine levels today, right now. You couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. No. But if you associate something from a, from a past memory to a future reality, if, I, if you had a fear of public speaking, and I said to you, you have to speak publicly tomorrow, the moment you begin to think about that future reality based on a past memory, your body would physiologically move out of balance and you probably would have a little bit of dryness of mouth, a little heart racing, a little sweating, and you produce the same physiological changes in your autonomic nervous system, not by consciously doing it, but by association. Right. It's automatic. Mm -hmm. Now, autonomic nervous system is the automatic nervous system. So two points. How do we get into the operating system? And the idea of meditation is the way that we do it. Because when you begin to create internal changes in your brain, and you begin to make your inner world more real than your outer world, mm -hmm. your brain begins to dissociate from all the conditions in this external environment. It begins to forget about the feelings of the body, and it literally loses track of time and space. That's the moment that the ego is no longer running the show, you become nobody, no one, nowhere, no thing, no time. You become pure consciousness. That's the moment consciousness being the epiphenomenon of your biology begins to change the brain and body so that it automatically or autonomically does what it naturally does. So it's not our job in the placebo to try to change our dopamine levels. Our job is to move into a new state of being. Being able to do that every single day, back to your question about repetition, requires a little bit of conditioning because you're going to walk back into your life and you're going to see your coworker and you're going to look at your car and you don't like it and you're going to you know, feel the pain in your back and you're going to see that you're overweight or whatever it is people do to reaffirm their identity through their senses. So the, the people that had the dopamine levels go up significantly in the, in the Parkinson's study the key was that when they had that change, the change only lasted for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they walked back into their life, they saw their wife, they went to play chess with their friends, they saw their caregiver, they slept in the same bed, and it was their environment that reminded them of who they were. That's how powerful the environment is. So to then retreat from our life every day and eliminate our senses, close our eyes, play music or plug our ears, put our body away, what we're really saying is we don't want to use the environment to remind us of who we are. We don't want to be a body. We don't want to identify with our body. And we want to forget about time long enough to remind ourselves by thought alone of who we're going to be. Now, that is the conditioning process of the placebo. And it turns out the people that had changes in Parkinson's disease in our, in our workshops where their intention tremors went away, they didn't put their faith in a sugar pill or a saline mm -hmm. injection. They put their belief in themselves and into a field of possibilities or traumatic brain injuries or whatever. And that same model works because the body literally gets conditioned as if it was being given something outside of them. And the privilege of being a human being is that we can make thought more real than anything else. That's the privilege because of the size of the forebrain. That's the, that's the architect, that's the designer, that's the CEO, that's the symphony leader. So the fact that we can make thought more real than anything else, and in that moment, you're in that environment, and all of your intent, attention and intention is consumed in that inner world, then that conditioning process, if there's an emotional quotient right. to it. Now, the emotional quotient is important because that's when you notice a change in your physiology. So you mm -hmm. go from neurotransmitters in your brain to neuropeptides in your limbic brain, to signaling hormones and you know thousands of th different uh, you know chemical reactions in your body. 
if you're able to create a shift in your emotional state as a result of the picture that you're seeing in your mind, now you're beginning the conditioning process. Right. So, it's, so a lot of people get caught uh, lost in this because, you know, uh, it's not an intellectual phenomenon. No. And and yeah. the end product of an experience is called a feeling or an emotion. So if you can make the thought, the experience in your mind, and you can put intention behind that. Well, now you're going to begin to see the effects in your biology. So you begin to create the placebo response. Now, let's go back to the idea of meaning, because right. meaning is an essential element in your interpretation of what's taking place. Mm -hmm. So, if you're embracing your life from the same level of mind every single day, then you, as the quantum observer, are assigning meaning. To the same reality and putting your intention behind it, and of course, because of free will and the quantum model, it basically said. That you're reaffirming your life to be exactly the same. If you take a group of maids, in, uh, they did this experiment where they took a, a select group of maids that were very physically active, and they followed them around for a period of time. And I think it was in Texas, and they found out that that these maids had a uh, uh, so much uh, worked so hard every day that they exceeded the Surgeon General's requirement for exercise. So they divided them into two different categories, and they said, "Okay, you keep doing what you're doing and working." And we took the other. They took the other group, and they said, "You know, when you exercise, you guys are actually exceeding the requirement for the Surgeon General. So you're burning more calories than you're eating, and you should be losing weight, and your lean body mass should go down, and your waist size should shrink, and your heart rate should change. These are all the benefits of exercise." Now, the maids for the next month did exactly what they always did. But the maids that were that understood what they were doing and they had meaning and intention mm -hmm. and knowledge behind what they were doing, of course, lost weight. Of course, had less body fat, had lower heart rate, because once you assign intention and meaning or purpose behind what you're doing, you produce a greater result. Right. So, right. the interpretation then of every single day, looking for the jewel in what we're doing and then assigning meaning behind it and keeping our intention on that future. Allows us then to produce greater results. That's another element of the placebo. When you start experiencing higher levels of consciousness, and you start freeing the body from the chains of the past, because the body is literally living in the past. When the body starts eliminating emotions or freeing up emotions, we move from particle to wave. We move from contraction to expansion. We start、uh, elevating our energy. And that energy literally leaves certain parts of the body, and it travels up the spinal cord. And when it reaches the reticular activating system, there's a little switch in there called the thalamic gate. And once that information is traveling from the body, and it opens that gate, all of us we've we've seen this in our studies in in、uh, in our advancing workshops. Once that gate is opened, the body literally is driving all that energy to the brain and. 
we have pictures of students in our... whose brains are literally like someone took the dimmer switch in a, in a room and turned it all the way up. Their brains are on fire. And that's not, that's not anything else but the brain going into a heightened state of super consciousness. And all of a sudden that energy that's normally pressed down in the body is now being amplified in the brain. The moment it reaches the brain, it starts intercoursing with the pineal gland. And the pineal gland sprays out all these wonderful neurohormones to sedate the ego. Right. It all of a sudden activates the posterior pituitary and you start spraying out all this oxytocin. Oxytocin makes its way into the amygdala and goes, let's shut off the circuits yeah. with fear. <laughs> let's shut off the circuits with aggression. Let's all shut off the circuits with sadness and guilt. <clears throat> and you go from selfish to selfless. And all of a sudden, you start trusting in the future. You start trusting in everybody. Your heart starts to open. I call that the natural state of being. Now, getting that particular activating system to open up mm -hmm. <clears throat> after years of conditioning, after years of unworthiness, after years of fear, after years of whatever, is an act of will. It takes a constant act of volition to be able to make that transformation. That's the alchemist taking base metals and turning it into gold. That's We're taking primitive emotions and turning them into elevated emotions. And it requires, on our part, a certain amount of effort to do that. So the reticular activating system, in its primitive sense, has a lot to do with the editing process from brain to body and body to brain. But by the same means, it's also the switch that activates higher centers and the brain goes into high gamma frequency. And that's the moment you'll never forget that experience ever because it's etched in your three-dimensional architecture cerebrally. Wow, what a great video. I hope you enjoyed this amazing interview with Dr. Joe Dispenza. We are continuing with our daily practice of completing the inspiring quotes. You need to complete the quote with the words that are missing, and if you can do it first and give us the right answer, you are the daily winner. In the previous video we were looking for two words of Joe Dispenza's quote. The quote goes like this. Master the next moment, master the next moment, and ultimately you'll the correct answer is, master yourself. So, master the next moment, master the next moment, and ultimately you'll master yourself. Congratulations to everyone with the correct answer. We only had a few wrong answers. Since I know you love Dr. Judy Spenza, today's quote is also from Judy Spenza. We are looking for two words. So the quote goes like this. If you want to change a belief or perception, you have to first change your state Write your answers in the comments below the video and tell me if you love this video and our new way of ending the videos. If you like this video, give your thumbs up and share it with your friends. Help me make this video more popular by sharing it. Even if you're not sure what the correct answer is, try and guess. The first one with the correct answer is the winner. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button and don't miss any of the new videos and new challenges. If you really like what we do here and want to support us, you can join our channel and our community for a symbolic fee and gain many other additional features. You can do that by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button. Or you can click on the link in the description of this video. Stay good and have a great day!